You got new uniforms? That's it's important. Always nice. It's nice. Like, <laughs> it's like everybody gets new gear. We get new uniforms, so it's uh, it's always a, a plus. Makes you feel good. Makes you feel a little faster out on the on the track when someone goes down. But uh, other than that, I think the biggest thing within the industry is making the concussion our concussion protocol mandatory for Supercross. So that was a big big. Uh, step in the right direction we feel for for the athletes so now so, that you're talking about the impact test correct that, that's correct impacts the software that we use but uh, having a baseline uh test for all the riders being mandatory so that uh, we have something to uh compare them to should they have a, a concussion was that not mandatory last year last year we went into supercross with the intention of trying it out and and kind of trying to work some kinks out before we made it mandatory and MX Sports, they went ahead and made it mandatory on us right after Supercross started. So we really had to, to hustle and, and put something together and in place so that we can have it up and running for, for the outdoors. So this year for Supercross, they made it mandatory. Most of the guys haven't already taken the baseline test for the outdoors. Uh, it wasn't uh, too much of a hassle getting it going for, for Supercross. Feld uh, was able to step up again this year with 100000 so that covers uh, a good portion of our expenses for the overall program. And then uh, 6D, the new helmet company, yeah. they came through and, and uh, picked up where our other sponsor um, wasn't able to, and then they stepped up and they sponsored the concussion program, which is separate than, than the asterisk program. Yes, yes. It all kind of goes in the same budget, but 6D came in and said, hey, you know, we're a new helmet manufacturer. We, we have a big, you know, interest in, in protecting guys' brains. So I think it kind of coincides with our mission statement. And so they stepped up and they, they dedicated their funds to our concussion program. It's free. I mean, obviously nothing's free, free, but it's free to them. They don't have to come in and, and pay for the test if, if um, they take the baseline test. Uh, yeah. Also, any, if they have a concussion, any subsequent tests, as long as they come either through my clinic or Dr. Ryman's clinic, uh, they don't have to pay for, for the test itself. Yes, you, there's, there's, different uh, ways that you can go about doing it. I, and it's definitely something that I, I talk to a lot of amateur parents about. And you can, you can visit the IMPACT website, it's impacttest.com, and you can find a location that offers the exam, and you can go there and take it. Uh, there's a cost to it, and I don't know what it is, it varies from, from clinic to clinic. Or they can contact me, and we can work something out where they can take the baseline uh, through my facility and have it on record. And if they were to have a concussion, you know, we can follow up through our protocol. The price it varies. For instance, for high school programs, some doctor's offices will charge five bucks and might not charge anything. Um, where the expense comes is should you have a concussion and you have to follow up with a physician, there's an office visit. So the doctor charges his normal office visit and he may be able to get it covered under insurance, but that's, that's where you run um, into uh, a difference in, in the cost. Look, look, I I could get in trouble for saying this personally, like someone could come back and, and yell at me. I really honestly think, I think it's a money issue. I think, I'm not talking helmet companies in general, I'm just mm -hmm. talking everybody in general that makes something, that makes a product. When you make a product and you don't change it very much from year to year, it doesn't cost you anything. You, it's all profit. So to go out and actually develop something that's way out there, test it and bring it to market, it's going to cost you a lot of money and you're probably not going to make much at the beginning. So who really wants to take it, you know, 
who wants to do that? Especially yeah. if you have investors or shareholders you gotta uh, make happy. I, I think that's that's part of the issue. And if 6D comes in and, and changes everything, the way we look at helmets across the board, um, that's awesome. And I think the other companies are gonna have to step up. They may have, they may have technology that they haven't brought to market yet because it's a cost issue, but now that 6D stepped up, you may see these companies coming out with stuff that, that'll that maybe be better, I don't know. Yeah. I think, it's just like anything, you know, when somebody steps their game up, you gotta step up or you're going backwards. Yeah, for sure. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I, it's only a good thing. Yeah. I mean, sure. look at neck braces. One company comes in and then you got four others and they're all claiming uh, that theirs is a little bit better and it's just, it makes it, you know, makes it good, it makes it good all the way around. Uh, just from the information that the guys at 6D put out when uh, we were talking to them this weekend, the one thing that really stood out to me that made the most sense, regardless of all the technology and all the numbers and everything, is they were able to, the best way they explained it was, when you look at a graph and you have these uh, data points, they have these sharp spikes in the graph, so helmets now, they only have to test for a certain impact and there's a spike in the graph. And what their helmet was able to do is not only absorb that high end impact, but these lower end impacts. So now instead of having a sharp spike, they have this gradual curve. So at every different level uh, of impact, they're able to absorb it and deflect it and they're able to prove that through their, their research and um, so that was probably just, the most significant thing that I saw that, that I was like, wow, that's really awesome. Um, I think time will tell. We'll see. Uh, one of the things that we do over at the Asterix crew is collect data, everything. Every injury that ever happens on the track, we have. Mm -hmm. From simple ankle sprains to dislocations to fractures to uh, falls. Anytime someone has a concussion, what helmet, what neck brace, what this, what that. So the, the data we have, and it's just trying to find a way that we can best use that data. So I think in time we'll see, um, we'll see how we can help these helmet manufacturers out. Exactly. So if you look at and I'm talking professional teams, NFL, yeah. Major League Baseball, NHL, each team has its, its medical staff. And as a whole, the league itself, they kind of have uh, a medical oversight as well. They have like a head doctor for the league that kind of helps do some research. We don't have that in Moto. Uh, every team is for themselves and every rider kind of is for themselves too. And it's, uh, you know, I'm gonna go seek out the best guy who I think for my injuries and so on and so forth. Well. There's some guys that don't have access to that kind of stuff, and I think everybody should have something. And so I was able to, uh, through some help, uh, get a little funding and be able to, for at least Supercross, um, work with the Asterix team in where if there are injuries on the track and a guy is staying here in town, he can come in and see me and I'll treat him during the week and hopefully get him back out onto the track the following week. And the way we have it set up right now is any injury on the track, they can come in, we'll offer them six visits free of charge um, and see if uh, we can make a difference there in that week and get them to the next race, hopefully feeling a little bit better. Shoulder injury, I mean, we're coming off a, uh, a surgery where for some reason or another, he wasn't uh, getting the range of motion that he needed and the doc said he better get on his uh, his rehab, otherwise they're gonna have to go back in there and, and uh, do a manipulation. So uh, he came in here to the clinic and we're actually kinda being a little bit more aggressive in getting that range of motion back. And I'm doing my part here in the clinic and then one of the things that, where most riders drop the ball is they gotta do their part at home. And I was point blank with him, I said, if you don't do your part at home, which is pretty much 75% of, of your rehab in this case, you're not gonna get the numbers that you need and it's gonna affect your performance on, on the bike. I mean, 
everything, I mean, everything. ankles, knees, shoulders. Um, I think uh, shoulders for sure, like thoracic mobility, shoulder mobility, that's the biggest issue in moto. Mm -hmm. Whether it's because they've had shoulder issues, uh, clavicle fractures, shoulder dislocations, they've had compression fractures in the upper body, that's probably 80% uh, of the injuries or complications that we have in sure. this sport. I mean, you have knees and ankles, but I think the upper body in general, because of everything that's going on up there, we have a lot of issues in this sport. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to do it, and it's for the last 10 years, it's been probably the best uh, part of, of my professional career is being able to, to work in, in Supercross and Motocross.